numbers. I believe the Citizens Advice Bureau ought to be empowered, ought to be given a modest degree of funding to promote the case and to promote giving advice to individuals, whichever kind of community they live in. Then those in areas such as Nottinghamshire who are due compensation will have the opportunity to get it. Lord Randall of Uxbridge. My Lords, this scheme is an attempt to compensate a generation of people who found themselves with a genuine and terrible injustice, a real stain on this country's recent history, highlighted by that very moving speech by the noble lady, Baroness Benjamin. I'd like to draw to the attention of the government another injustice that will not be addressed by this measure, but it is one that affects many of the Windrush generation and many others too throughout the world. Monica Phillip was indeed one of the Windrush generation who accepted the invitation from the British government to emigrate from the Caribbean to help fill the employment gap here in the UK. She arrived in the UK shortly before her 21st birthday in 1959 and worked tirelessly in a variety of jobs, including in the Ministry of Defence as a courier, where she worked for 15 years. Her mother's illness and failing eyesight forced Monica to leave the UK and return to Antigua in 1996, two years before her due retirement age. In 1998, Monica was advised she was entitled to a UK state pension, payment of which commenced in October 1998 at the rent of £74.11p per week, but it has remained at that level ever since. It's extremely unfair that this hard-working lady, and now of course elderly, accepted the UK government's call to work here, and having paid for 37 years the same contributions as everyone else, Yet having accepted the responsibility of returning to Antigua to look after her ailing mother, she's effectively being cheated out of her rightful pension, where her younger sister, who also emigrated to the UK but who remains here, received a full pension with those annual increases roughly double that of her elder sister. And I'd like to highlight another Antiguan, Harold Williams, who left the island in 1955, age 20. He worked hard, was always employed, did his national service here in the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers Regiment, for 40 years, Harold contributed diligently to the National Insurance Scheme. When he returned to Antigua, he was at no time informed that his pension would be frozen on his return. These frozen pensioners never have an increase in the basic pension. This iniquity exists for the majority of Commonwealth countries. Strangely, in the Caribbean, only Barbados and Jamaica do not have frozen pensions. In my years in the other place, I've consistently heard ministers of all governments give their excuses for this state of affairs. This can be resolved without a huge cost to the Treasury. I know the measure we are discussing today cannot address this. Indeed, the Minister herself is not from the relevant department. But my Lord, this is something which is indeed another stain on our country's much vaunted sense of fairness and equality. I urge the government to think again, and I will return to this until we right this wrong. I thank noble Lords for their indulgence in letting me raise this issue today. I hope we can now hear from Lord Wolfe. Can we? Do we have Lord Wolfe? Yeah, yes, you have me. I do apologise. The, uh, the system went down. 